The Fishing Tab, a tab chock full of lures and floats for as far as the eye could see. The problem, well, at least one of the problems, is that you may only need eyes for about two or three of each. The possibilities, potential combinations, and even avenues of obtainment are seemingly endless, and while that sounds good, it honestly means next to nothing. But I'm not only getting ahead of myself here, I'm not really selling this guide. There are some neat things to discuss, so let's do that instead. And it all starts with the construction of the tackle receptacle under the structures tab. I feel like this thing has had its crap change roughly seven times, but where it stands today is at a piece of driftwood, an electrical doodad, and a bone shard. Simple enough, but one will have to actually locate driftwood out on the water beforehand. However, it's very common, so I wouldn't worry about it. You can get crap tons of the stuff out on the lunar beaches of the lunar island as well, so the choice is yours. Cause whatever the case, the tackle receptacle offers us the fishing tab, and straight away, we can actually take advantage of a select few floats and lures for our pleasure. There is plenty of mumbo jumbo to go along with both sets of attachments, but I'll try to do my best to make sense of it all for ya. Starting with the floats. And to understand what floats would do to our sea fishing rod casting techniques, we should know what not having one accomplishes itself. With no float and no lure, a cast has a maximum range of 5, a range deviation of 30%, and an angle deviation of 40 degrees. And what the heck does all that mean? Well, it means a potential 30% difference between a cast's maximum range and lowest, all the while the accuracy of said cast being wide wildly off at times. Up to 40 degrees off, that is. So alright then, what does that essentially mean for the basic wooden ball bobber here? Well, our casting range will actually significantly increase to 9, with our range deviation dropping to 20%. Now, while that's still potentially a large difference in range, I really wouldn't worry about it. Plus, the overall accuracy of your casts will have improved as well. But listen, every single cast will vary. So, to be frank, none of these specific stats actually mean anything at the end of the day. However, we will eventually enter some decent territory, even with the second available float itself. The Hardened Slip Bobber. Sure, the range and angle deviations are the exact same as the Wooden Ball Bobber, but its range has jumped to 11 over the previous 9, meaning that those very deviations are actually better for us in this case. Still, I could cast a perfect float 9 out of 10 times, while you may quote unquote fail every other cast. So again, do these stats actually matter? Well, to be honest, that will always have a subjective answer, I suppose. However, objectively, things do actually get better stats-wise as we progress here. You just have to work for it is all. Work and pray, that is. As for us to have further access to any more additional floats, we actually need to go on some bird hunts, everyone. Crows, redbirds, bluebirds, and canaries all have a 1% chance to drop what is known as an advert for their specific float. But note that ocean debris can also contain not only the jet feather float advert specifically, but actually some other floats and lures too. That said, I really wouldn't bother trying to find and then roll the dice on ocean debris for any of these things. Oh, and yet another arguably better source of these birdie floats is Pearl herself, cause at around level 3 friendship, she is bloody selling them for Pete's sake. One bottle over a 1% chance for a drop? Yeah, I know which one I'm gonna try to shoot for first. Ah, and I should probably mention that once you do actually get these adverts, you will be needing to feed them into your tackle receptacle in order to gain access to their specific crafts for yourself. And all in all, the crafts themselves are simple. But even after all of that, will any of them make a difference? Well, considering how all four share the exact same stats, I guess it depends on said stats themselves. And unfortunately, our range is going to drop to the lower side of things at 9. 
However, with range and angle deviations of but 15% and 15 degrees respectively, these floats are some of the most accurate and reliable around. Every cast will differ, of course, but we're on the right track now. So then, what comes next? Simple. Bigger birds, I guess. Both the moose that looks like a goose and the big blue bird of the sea have a guaranteed chance to drop an advert for their specific floats. Word of warning though, or rather maybe a word of advice, both floats accomplish the same exact bloody thing. So, just sticking with the Moose Goose one could really save you some trouble. Especially because it's going to be the best float available to you at the littlest amount of issue. These big bird floats boast the highest range out there at 13, as well as the lowest range and angle deviations in the game at but 5% and 5 degrees, respectively. In short, they are insanely accurate, even on quote-unquote failed casts, and cover long distances to boot. Very good stuff. But two last notes before we move on to lures. Funnily enough, the hardened rubber bung trinket can actually be used as a float, and even though it too has a range of 13 overall, its accuracy is absolutely atrocious. And finally, even but a twig can be used as a float, with a range of 7, a range deviation of 20%, and an angle deviation of 30 degrees. Not that bad, and definitely still way better than having nothing attached at the end of the day. Oddly though, the same can't really be said about lures, as believe it or not, having no lure is often better than keeping one attached. Now, that might sound strange, but it's honestly true. And while this table here may appear convoluted, it can be broken down rather easily. All lures have a base radius and attraction level, with certain actions like reeling them in increasing said attraction. The radius of these lures themselves simply means how close ocean fish need to be in order to be attracted to a particular lure, with higher being better. The range bonus actually corresponds with all them floats we've been talking about. So certain combinations could really see some big time cast distances overall. The idle and real bonuses are exactly that. Some lures become more attractive when just sitting in the water while others lose or gain attractiveness while being reeled in. Just like real fishing for Pete's sake. And finally, the attraction modifier is but a base level of attractiveness for all ocean fish for all types of lures, with some being completely ineffective at zero attractiveness and otherwise. But in the end, this fact still remains, and I've said it many times over the years. You can have no float, no lure, and yet still catch every single ocean fish in the game. Hmm. Kinda weird if I'm honest. Cause here's the thing. Some of these lures are rather unique, so it is a shame that most of them can be just straight up ignored. For example, the lures immediately available to us via a tactical receptacle all correspond to fishing during certain times of the day, and their name should give that away. Thing is though, even with varied ranges, attractiveness, crafts, and more, all six are just exactly the same thing essentially, but don't even work for all the same types of fish. It honestly is all just a mess, and what makes it worse is that all you need are but two, maybe even one lure above it all. The heavy weighted and stupefying lures. The heavy weighted lure only attracts heavier fish, but attracts all ocean fish types at the highest levels regardless, and the stupefying lore also has the best attraction stats in the game, all the while tiring out fish faster for all around the best, easiest fishing in the entire game. And heck, these things aren't even hard to get. For you see, Pearl grants bundles of thanks every two friendship levels, and these can contain these fancy lures for you. But not only that, at but level 6 friendship, she just straight up starts selling them the boots for but 2 bottles. Then on top of all that, trading heavy seasonal fish to her also just grants an opportunity for these specific lures too. Trade a heavy flounder in autumn for a stupefying lore as soon as possible, and you're gonna be golden forever. But all that said, before we wrap up, two last lore mentions. The snow day lore and the rainy day lore. One works best when it's raining, the other snowing. 
Otherwise, they are pretty much altogether worthless in comparison, as their attractiveness drops to zero outside of those conditions. Good stuff. I just don't get it, everybody. So much to talk about. Plenty of specific requirements, stats, you name it. But it all amounts to practically nothing. Again, you don't even need any float or any lure to catch any ocean fish. And if you do, what then even? So much depth for something that is just so shallow overall. It's a shame because I do actually enjoy the prospect of having different lures and such mean something. But if all I need is just one for all, I don't have any reason to care for any. But there you have it, everyone. The lures and floats of Don't Starve Together. One of the last bits of information to cover in our little seafaring series here. Thanks for watching, well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.